my flesh trembleth for fear of thee. He says, my flesh trembleth for fear of thee. Who is he talking to? What is he talking about? He's talking about God. He said, look, my flesh trembleth for fear of thee. And I am afraid of thy judgments. For me to be afraid of God's judgments, I got to understand that God is the one that's judging. Amaya, I Amaya, I'm uh, Mikaya, all right? Uh, you know, you've been chopping it with us for a while, you know? We, we like people that, that's like that, because, you know, most of our people, they just want to come up and they run real quick. But, um, you know, I can see that you kind of been dealing with us for a little while. Uh, you said you're about 19, 19, you're in school right now, or college? Uh, no, I'm just working right now. You're working right now? For sure, for sure. You got, um, I, mean, I like to get personal with our people. You, you got a boyfriend? Um, yeah. Um, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. How long have you been dating? Uh, a little minute. Like a minute now? Like a year? All right. Um, have y'all spoken about marriage and stuff like that? The future, you know, family uh, life, stuff like that? Not like in depth. A little bit touching on it? Okay, okay. I'm not trying to get too personal with you, but, you know, I like to ask questions like that because that's, that's kind of the mindset that I used to think about when I was growing up in school, you know. Um, how can I look like my parents? I always like that whole family lifestyle type of thing, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you have brothers and sisters. What's some of the like greatest memories you remember from growing up? You had like a lot of good memories. Um, yeah, me and my brother and cousin, we just literally just walked all day. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just okay. Play outside. For sure. For sure. For sure. Um. Now, you said y'all kind of touched on possibly getting together. Is it? You think it's a serious thing or? Um, yeah. yeah? All right, so earlier, the brother was talking about God's laws, right? I want to talk about like the importance of it, right? Why, why is that important for us to try to keep, right? God's laws and commandments. Give me an uh, enticing mate. I'm going to touch on something real quick, because the reason why our communities end up the way it is, is like they said earlier, we don't have God's laws. We don't That's have right. the laws that we're supposed to be keeping. Right. Right. God's laws are only for the Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's, That's right. right. And the problem is we don't understand that we forgot that or we think it's a white man's book. Well, watch right, this. Read right. this book. The book of Exodus, chapter 22, verse 16. And if a man entice a man that is not betrothed. What does it mean to entice? Persuade. Right, right. Persuade. Try to get your mind to, to grow to like him, right? That's right. Good. And if a man entice a man that is not betrothed and lay with her, so a maid that is not betrothed, I mean someone, a woman who's not promised to a man for marriage, you understand? So if a man persuades that woman to like him, right? And then what does he do with her? And lay with her. Have sex with her. Y'all are, are y'all? Okay, cool, he, you don't gotta say much. But he, if, he, if he does that to the woman, what is he supposed to do after that? He shall surely endow her to be his wife. He's supposed to marry that sister, right. you understand? The problem with the non-marrying of the woman is whether you're married or not, two people coming together in a relationship that causes uh, a, a process of yielding. You understand? When you come together, you got two different lifestyles. Now you gotta figure out how to make that one. You gotta figure out how to become one, right? In the process of that, there's gonna be issues. That's right. There's gonna be issues. There's never a perfect uh, sing-along song of a marriage with no problems. That doesn't you know. exist. There's gonna be issues. But when a man is with a woman, and those issues come up in that process, now there's a there's an escape. You understand? Because I'm not married to that sister. If she does something that I don't really I don't really vibe with, right. I can leave. Bring it now up. that sister is left with what? Broken emotions. You understand? If we are, if we were to have a child together, now the child has to grow up without the both parents in the household. That's right. If that's a young boy, he's gonna grow up and more than likely try to find that union out on the block somewhere. You understand? He may not willingly put himself out there, but he's looking for that union. He's looking for that love, that bond. That's he may right. not have it with his father because his father left him up. You see what I'm saying? That broken household then becomes multiple broken households in a whole community. Then, no one loves each other. I don't like you, I got daddy issues, but. That's right. Because 
you stepped on my shoe, or because you looked at my girl wrong, now I'm gonna shoot you, or we're gonna fight, we're gonna scrap. Teach. All that is really started from the house, you understand? But when the parents, they don't marry each other, when those problems happen, the skate is still there, that back door is still there. You know, the, the dude is like, man, I don't need this, I'm out. Take whatever, you can have whatever, or give me everything back. That happens in our community all the time. That's right. The so-called white man who put this whole nation together, who, who's running, who's ruling the kingdom right now, if you look at billboards, he'll say, divorce, call this number. You don't even got to have the partner with you. No paperwork. He's making it easier to tear up the niggas' household. That's right. He wants the black man to stay on the bottom. He don't want the children to grow up with that strength. Why? Right. Right. Because if you can, if I can tear up the children, and put them in an environment to where they don't have that, that protection, That's they right. don't have that love, they don't have that monetary support, now I can lead them into the direction I want to take them. You understand? Give me that in Psalms about the enemy, right? Uh, what is that, 83, 82? 83, sir. So, you know, if you're dealing with a man, right, what you want to be thinking about is marriage. If he ain't thinking about marriage, hey, cut him off. For real, for real. Cause it's, it's, whether y'all in uh, whether y'all in like a honeymoon phase or the baby phase or you know whatever lovey dovey, all, that's gonna come to an end, right? Then the problems are gonna come. Y'all gonna try to figure out how to, okay, where do we wanna live? What house you wanna live in? <laughs> what do you wanna do for a living? What do you wanna do since when you grow up and you become the Air Force? Air Force, okay, I feel you. Air Force. What about him? Um, he's out of the Air Force. He's out there. He's, he's already in it and he's already out. Okay, so somewhat kind of a similar path. All right, so have y'all thought about where y'all wanna live? South Carolina, New York, West Coast? Um, I'm not sure yet. Not sure I don't yet. wanna be in South Carolina, I just don't know where. Okay, so in the process of that, y'all gonna come to uh, disagreements. But in order, to in order for y'all to be a successful relationship, you gotta have a marriage. A man has to marry you, all right? When you go back, take that to him. Hey, the Bible says, in, what is it, Deuteronomy 22 and 5? Exodus 22 and 5. 2 through 16? Say, hey, in Exodus 22 and 16, you're supposed to marry me. See what he says. Hebrews what? 13. Watch this, watch this. Hebrews 13 and 4. The book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all. It says marriage is what? Honorable in all. Say, look. If you say you love me, what's his name? Trey. Trey. Hey, Trey, if you say you love me, the way that you honor us is to bring the paperwork. Make it official. Right. It don't got to be nothing extravagant. When I married my wife, we didn't have no big wedding and all that. We didn't need all of that. The fact that I said that I wanted to love that woman and have a family, I, I supported that with, with, uh, with proof. You understand? I put the paperwork there. If you say you love you, if Trey is the one, then you got to bring the papers. You understand? That's honorable. God looks at that, all right, now I can do something with them. They got a little marriage going on. That's right. We got a man in the house. We got a woman. Eventually, they're going to want to have children. You want to have children? I mean, one day, one, two, five, twenty? Um, probably two. Probably two? All right. Probably two. Play it safe. All right, so what are you doing? Marriage is honorable at all. And the bed undefiled. When y'all are married, whatever you decide to do with Trey, that's that's perfectly fine as long as it's not against the Bible. Right. That's y'all bed. That's you have the you have the permission by God Himself to do whatever y'all want to do in that bed together as a couple, as a union. As long as it's not going against any sexual morality type things, that's y'all business. Right. Y'all have the, the full right to do it. I know when you was growing up. What, what, what your pops and your mom probably say, don't bring no boy in this house, right? Yeah. Something like that. We got permission by God himself. It's an undefiled thing, you know? But whoremongers! What is a whoremonger? Um, like, chasing sex. Right. Whoremongering is like, all right, if Trey decided to leave you, and then Trey goes to the next sister down the block. Bring it out. Are you going to like that sister? Probably not. I may not have clothes, but if you see her with Trey, you can be like, I tell him all that. Look at her. You learn that from me. And then you, you can probably let her see you do whatever, but that, that's real. That goes on in our communities. Now you got sisters that are going even farther. 
and try to bust windows out cars and brothers and no. tie, all that, that stuff, right? That's a whole mongering spirit. Whole mongering can bring murder in our community. Because now you got the same tray that was with Amai Amaya. He might hop around with other sisters over there. God forbid, right? But if he doesn't marry you, what's stopping him? You gotta think about that. Ain't nothing stopping him. And that's coming from a man. If any one of these brothers right here was not married, because we all got wives. I got a wife, you'd be married up here. You understand? But if we wasn't, what's gonna stop us from leaving and going to another one up down the block? Nothing. So we don't. But whoremongers and adulterers. What's an adulterer? It's cool, it's cool. I know, I just can't put it in words. Can't put it in words? All right. So, I'm married, right? I got a wife. Cheating on my wife. There you go, plain and simple. Right. What, what, is, what is wrong with that? Before I read on. A lot. You made a commitment. Like what? I'm breaking the commitment, right? right? Is, is she going to trust me anymore? Hell no. Nah. nah, nah. She's never going to trust me, right? If Trey cheated on you, if y'all was married, would you trust Trey again? You know what Trey's at right now? You know what? If Trey was to, if y'all was married and he committed adultery on you, and Trey went to work, are you gonna trust him at work? No. no. That breaks that bond. Now y'all gotta rebuild something that should have never been there. You understand? Read on. But who among his adulterers? God will judge. It says God will judge anybody who's committing adultery or in the midst of foremonger, hopping around from uh, partner to partner. How can God judge somebody like that? What kind of judgment can come on a person like that? Um, if you can't be loyal to somebody you made a commitment to, you're not really trustworthy. Um, yeah. So what's, a, can. so what's a consequence? I use that instead of judgment. What's a consequence that'll happen if Trey left Amaya and went with Keisha? And then after Keisha, he went with Sabrina. No. What's the consequence that Trey might face? From God or just in general? Just in general. What you think? Um, STDs. Oh, STDs. Yeah. No. He wouldn't even face that if he stayed with the same woman. If he said, you know what, Amaya? I'm done with all this. Let's get married. Right. Like, straight up. Let's go to the, the courthouse, whatever we got to do. We're going to make this forever. Right. Paperwork. We don't need no money. We don't got to spend no striving. Nah. Get the paper, sign it up. Boom. Be official. I'm going to be with you forever. If Trey did that, he wouldn't have to worry about STDs. Or you wouldn't. Right. Because if, right. if you were behind your back and you didn't know, then you pop up. You're going to get your you know, doctor's check, whatever. Doctor come to you and say, yo, yo you got HIV. What? Where did I get this one? Trey. <laughs> you understand? You don't got to worry about that judgment. What's another consequence? Death? Yeah, How? It's Explain it. Get, get some details. Um, it's dangerous. Um, How is it dangerous? I, I like the answer. There's, there's, there's different ways you can go about that. How is death one of the consequences of Trey being a whoremonger? Um, we with, multiple, with multiple people, it's dangerous. And, um, and God. What could that lead to? How could Trey potentially die? They say other than STDs. The STDs are one of them, right? Some of them are curable. Some of them you can live with. Some of them will, will kill you. Once you find out, you're just going to watch that person pretty much shrivel up and die, right? What's another one? I'll help you out. If Trey hops around with Sabrina, Ashley, Keisha, don't you think they mess around with dudes too? If they allow Trey to do it? So what if Trey runs into Keisha and then find out that Keisha got Ron? Oh, now Ron about to pull up on Trey. Trey don't know what he's getting into. You understand? Now you got drive-bys, all of that. Because Trey couldn't marry Amaya. You understand? That's, how, that's the levels he can go into. So that's God's judgment. That actually comes from God. You understand? I'm going to give you an example. Give me Deuteronomy 28 verse 61. Watch this. 
Because you that, that was heavy what you said. You said God, right? You was like, is it God or just in general? It's the same thing. Watch this, read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 61. Read so in Deuteronomy 28, what we've been reading so far are the curses from verse 15 on down are the different judgments that happen to these people right here. The blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, Cubans, Dominicans. Those are the, these are the judgments in Deuteronomy 28 that happen to our people only. But watch this, read. Also, every sickness. Every what? Every sickness. Is STD a sickness? It is, read. And every plague, which is not written in the book of the law. There's nowhere in the Bible where you read HIV. Bring it out. AIDS. That's not going to be written in the Bible. Those are new sicknesses that came on this earth. Right. Right? Read on. It says, what's going to happen? Them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. Them will who bring upon you? The Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. Amaya, that's a judgment from God. That's a that's consequence right. that God will put on us. Right. Because we broke his laws. Right. You see how, how the equation all makes sense? If, if God tells me, if I entice a sister, right, and I get her to like me, you know. and I don't marry that sister, then more than likely I'm going to face one of these sicknesses. Because eventually, when me and a, if when Trey and Amaya don't get along, y'all come on hard times, y'all have altercation, Trey might walk out, or you might hop skip. You understand? Know but now, that leaves the door open for STDs. Right. That leaves the door open for murder, hatred. Right. Because whoever y'all go to next, both of y'all are still living and walking on this earth. So y'all gonna cross paths again somehow. You don't think there's gonna be jealousy, hatred, right? Envy, strife. That happens. That's how it happens. Nobody just wakes up one day and says, I'm gonna shoot that guy. Bring it up. Nah, that guy was sleeping with my girl. I'm gonna kill that. You know what I'm saying? That's where that happens. Hatred starts from within. Give me another example of one of the, uh, the Lord killed. Deuteronomy 32 and 39. When death happens on this earth, Amaya, is that a coincidence? It's not a coincidence. Think about it. The, he the God of heaven and earth, the one who created everything, the sky, the earth, the stars, everything that you see, all the elements, the trees, fire, water, all of that stuff that we can't create ourselves. The Most High God created that. Right. Don't you think he has control over who lives and who dies? Right, he does. But people say, especially Christianity, they say, oh, the devil did it. The devil is busy. Read this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32 and verse 39. Read it out. See now that I, even I, am he. God says, I am he. I'm the one in charge. Right? Read and there is no God with me. Can't nobody else stop me from what I'm going to do. That's what God, that's the kind of power that the God we serve has. That's right. We serve that God. That's the God of the Israelites only. Right. God is the black God. I'm going to read that later. Watch. I kill. God does what? Kill. God, no. Who kills? I kill. God says he's killing. Whenever someone dies on this earth, God did it. Read. And I make a love. He also is the one that brings life. He controls the spirits when they come to this earth and then when they leave this earth. God is in control of all of that. No, nothing go under his feet. Nothing goes behind his back. Read. I wound. He says, I what? I wound. I wound. When somebody get in a car accident, what's the first thing they say? After they get out, if they, they make it, they make it out alive. Um, am I wounded? Bring it out. They'll say something like, Yo, the devil almost got me, but God, he saved me. Bring it out. That's the, the, the wrong mindset. If I get in the car today, the first thing I'm thinking is, oh, what did I do? Right. Um, Lord, thanks for the mercy, but show me show me my error. Did I mess up in, in the past? Like, how can I fix it? I'm thinking like that. That's because he wounded me, right? I could have got my leg hurt in my back, whatever the case may be. It might not be nothing serious, but I'm thinking like, all right, you got my attention. You understand? I'm here. What do I need to listen to? Or it could just be now that I'm jacked up. Let me let me focus on how I'm gonna fix my lifestyle. You understand? Read. God does that. Read. And I heal. And I heal. The doctors on this earth can't do nothing compared to God. If God don't allow it to happen, it ain't happening. There's been plenty of people that's been taking medicals, but the healing the healing doesn't come unless God allows it. You understand? So with a God like that. 
the mindset should be, you know what? Let me find out who the source is. Forget all the stuff in between. If I can, if I can connect and do what God wants me to do, then I know that I'm safe. And if it's time for me to go, it is what it is. I can't stop it. There's nothing my, nobody else can stop it. You understand? At least if I go, I'm gonna go in peace. If I get hurt, all right, God is getting my attention. That's the mindset. We you know, is that more? Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Can nobody stop it? If it's meant for Trey to marry you, he's gonna follow God's laws and do it. Yes, if it's meant for Trey to die, whatever time that is, God's gonna allow that to happen. If it's meant for somebody over there to get in the car and it down the block, that nobody can stop that from happening. You understand? Right. So with a guy like that, what should I be doing? I should learn how to fear him. Yes, I should learn right. the real understanding of how to do what he says to do. Bring it right? In. So. Give me that in uh, Psalms about the fear. Give me that. I think it's Psalms 1. You got it? 119, 119, 109. Which one? The book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 120. Bring it out. My flesh trembleth. And I appreciate you for, for rocking with us, for real, because we're not going to be out here all day. You know what I'm saying? You got the rest of your day. You're going to do your thing. We're about to wrap it up in a, well, I don't know how long, but we ain't going to be here all day. You understand? So you rocking with us like that, we appreciate that. So, we don't. My flesh Tremble it for fear of thee. He says, my flesh tremble it for fear of thee. Who is he talking to? What is he talking about? He's talking about God. He said, look, my flesh tremble it for fear of thee. Right. And I am afraid of thy judgments. For me to be afraid of God's judgments, I got to understand that God is the one that's judging. Right? You ever heard of, uh, you ever watch those videos on YouTube of sinkholes? When you look at the videos, some of the craziest things be happening. It'd be, it'd be like five people standing here and the ground open up only for one person. That's right. I'm scared of something like that. Straight up. If I, if I realize, hey, how you doing, bro? What's going on? If I realize that I'm doing something that God doesn't like, the first thing I want to think about is, I, right, I'm living on thin ice. You understand? Going out of days of, you know, the devil is busy, but, you know, God loves me. He has mercy. Nah, God is sparing my life. Right. For real. I'm living on thin ice. I need to figure out how to how to get myself right before my time is up. Because you don't want the angels to look at your books, right? At the end of the day, in Judgment Day, we all got books of all the things that we did. All right, we got that. You know what that said? The books. Revelation. Revelation 20 and 10. Watch this real quick. And what's the name, by the way? Chris. Chris. Chris and Amaya. All right. Good on. Verse 12. Watch this. Watch this. And I saw the dead, small and great, uh -huh. stand before God, and the books were open. It says books, plural. You got books of all the things that you did in life, good and bad. Amaya, yep. you got books. And the angels are keeping record of everything they're doing. You got to go to work. Hold on, you just came here, bro. What's going on? I just stopped. I just saw. Hey, but look, watch out. Watch me in the street. All right, but look, why, why are you walking? We're going gonna to finish this. Watch this. Check that fly out. Yeah, read that fly. We got a website there too. Great. And the books were open. And another book was open. So it says another book was open. What do you think that book is? Uh, Bible. Yes. Right. The Bible, which has all the laws of the things that we should have been doing. Read. Which is the book of life. The book of life. Right. Read. And the dead were judged out of those things. So, read. Which were written in the books so amaya you got books trey got books on judgment day we're going to get judged by the things that we've done based off of what this book says so you got a picture how that looks you got this book and you got books over here these are amaya's books now what's today's day the 29th yeah, yeah the 29th of april 2023 amaya was standing in front of the prophets of god and she stood there for about an hour two hours Damn, she stood out there strong. And she read all, she heard everything that the prophets was reading. Okay? Now, when they asked her, was she gonna not wear pants anymore? She said, turn the page, I'm gonna take the pants off and put a dress on. Amaya said that. Okay, that's been documented. The angels wrote all that down, right? Now, if Amaya therefore goes after that and says, ah, I'm just gonna keep rocking what I got. I'm not gonna really change up my wardrobe or nothing like that. I'm not going to keep any other laws that, they, that I heard in me. Now they're going to mark that too. Okay, she didn't do this. She didn't do that. She did that. Okay. 
maybe maybe she needs some time grace period boom 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 let's look what the bible says a woman shall not wear what pertains to a man is she doing it she's not doing it god all right judgment comes up you understand there's no mercy at that point right now you got the mercy so the point of all of that is the fear of god the understanding of how to fear him you should want to start applying the laws of God. Yes, how do you learn all of that? You ain't gonna learn it in one day. I didn't learn it in one day. These men didn't learn it in one day. You understand? It took time. We watched videos. We came together, a congregation. We got sis, we got sisters all up in the school, right? We got the kitchen team. You go there and get you a plate. You understand? Like it's good vibes. We got our teachers bringing out the good understanding, telling us the future of what's gonna happen to all these different wars, the rumors of wars that goes on. Telling us how to fix our families, our households. We do this. Yes, you understand? Boy. So it's a whole nation that we're building. And it ain't just in South Carolina. It's over the globe. You understand? Once you come and build with us, that's when you start learning how to fully convert, like you heard earlier. What's what's converted? Um, like switching over. To switch over, to change. Like right. like a like a currency. AC converts to DC, right? Conversion is happens within. In order for you to change how you dress, you gotta change what type of clothing should you start thinking about? What is it what does it look like for a sister to dress in modesty, a modest apparel? What does modesty mean? Um modest like somebody pull up modesty, the definition of modesty. Type in Israelite woman on um original royalty. You got it? Watch this, this is the definition of modesty. The quality or state of being unassuming or moderate. In, oh, excuse me. My fault, my fault, my fault, my fault. Behavior. Excuse me. Definition of modesty. Behavior, manner, or appearance attended to avoid impropriety or indecency. That's a quality definition. Brother was like, yo, look. <laughs> All right, so watch this. The first word. The picture. Beautiful. Watch this. Look at this real quick. Check this out. You can scroll through them. That's how our daughters, our sisters, our mothers, our wives, that's how they dress. Bad to the bone. You understand? Beautiful. Not like Harriet Tubman with, you know, <laughs> none of that old stuff. Hey, but the first word in that definition said behavior. You caught that? So, in order for a behavior to change, that's the conversion. That's within the mind. Before right. I even see an outfit, I, the behavior it starts in the mind first. When you get up to get to get ready, however your mind is, that's how you're gonna put it on in your outfit. That's why they say you you can't judge a book by its cover. Yes, you can. When I walk into a bank, I'm gonna get sized up based off how I look. Period. When I go to to get a job, I'm not. I literally saw. I'm a quick story. I saw I saw one of my brothers right. He meant to go apply for a job. He had a blue bag on, smelled like weed. He came at four o'clock in the afternoon. Is he really gonna get that job? Probably not. Now, can we give him the benefit of the doubt, depending on what job it is, right? But more than likely, his appearance already spoke before he opened his mouth. But y'all got senses, you got your eyes, right? Before you talked to Trey, or before he spoke to you, what did you see in him first? Before words were even spoken? Handsome. Yeah. All right. Had a little fly off it on. You know. Right. Did, did he have him cologne? Yeah. So then the nose kicked in. Now he's right. smelling, right? What about the speech when he started talking? Did he sound like he was like uh, not smart or whatever? No. No, he sounded like he had a little head on his shoulders, right? Okay. So now as those things are kicking in, you are already judging him. It takes a woman about what, 13 seconds? You know the number, right? 13 seconds or something? Something like that. You can look at a guy right now and be like, nah, not my type. How you know that? You want some water? Get it right? You good? You can look at it real quick and know. Not my type. Because you can judge it. But when you look at the definition of modesty, the first word is behavior. So it's a different spirit within that those sisters that you saw in that picture, they have to learn from the inside first. That's a whole other, that's a whole other vibe. You got the video? Read this in uh, about modesty. Watch this. Read it out. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2 and verse 9. 
in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. You don't just say that a woman put on modest clothes. It says women adorn themselves in modest apparel. That's beautiful. Ooh. That's right. With shame faceness. Shame faceness. How can somebody have a, what's a shame face? Shame face. What's shame face? Hold back, give me Proverbs, I think it's seven. Talked about the woman. Yeah. Proverbs seven. Uh, Proverbs seven, right? Hold that Timothy. What what's shame faceness? Shameful. Okay. I'm gonna give you the opposite and then I'm gonna ask the same question again. Alright? Proverbs 7, what verse? Verse 10. Okay. Alright. Give me verse. Start at verse, verse 9. Verse 10. Start at verse 10. The book of Proverbs, chapter 7 and verse 10. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. So this woman right here, she did not have on modest clothes. She had the attire of a hoe. You understand? How can that be known without talking to that woman based off of what she was wearing? Right? Read. And subtle of heart and subtle of mind. She was. She had a. She had a mission. And, and she, everything was inside. She wore those clothes for a reason. You understand? Read. She is loud and stubborn. So in her speech, she's not quiet. She's not humble. She's not kind. She's not putting game on a man. She's loud and stubborn. She don't want to hear nothing. You understand? That's a different mind. Read. Her feet abide not in her house. That woman stay in the streets. She don't stay home. You understand? Read. Now is she without? Now in the streets and lieth in wait at every corner. So this sister, she got on homeless clothes. She's out at every corner and loud and stubborn. Is she not trying to be seen? She's trying to be seen by everybody who puts their eyes on her. So that's eventually going to lead to other things, right? Read. So she caught him. Uh -huh. She caught him. The, the simple guy that fought, that fell into that trap. She caught him, right? Read. And kissed him. And kissed him. And with an impudent face. With an impudent face? Said. Read that. Read that. What kind of face is that? An, an impudent face. Somebody look up the word impudent. Impudent, real quick. Impudent, definition. This sister right here, loud and stubborn, with hoarse clothes on, out in the streets, right? Showing off her body. This is the kind of face that she had. Read. It's the definition of impudent. Not showing due respect for another person. Impertinent. Uh-huh. We uh pull up the other similar words. Not showing respect to a person. Her face did not have that respect or that modesty toward another guy. Read the definition. Uh, right. Shameless. Uh-huh. Immodest. What? Immodest. What? Immodest. So the woman in Proverbs 7 that had the impudent face, she had an immodest face. So her behavior was already saying what she wanted to do before she even left the house. Then she had the face to trap that simple guy. You know what? I'm going to put on revealing clothes to show my body. I'm going to be loud and stubborn so they can hear me. Right. When I answer the phone, I'm going to be all loud. I'm going to be on speaker. Bring it up. Right? That type of woman doesn't want a husband. Yes. Right? That's the opposite of modest. Right. So you understand what that, that the opposite of, right? So now let's go back to Timothy. Read that again. First Timothy chapter two and verse nine. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So this is the opposite. The woman should cover her body. The body is precious. Your body, like I said, if you and Trey are serious, if Trey is serious, he'll marry you this week. I'm serious. Straight up. No games. You understand? He's not supposed to want your body to be revealed to everybody else. Right. The sister that I walked by earlier, if she had a husband, I guarantee you, he wouldn't be happy with how she's dressing. That's right. Unless his mind is wrong. He's all jacked up. You understand? Right. You understand? Read. With shame faceless. So that's the opposite of the impudent face. Now, what's shame face? Um, you got it. You got it. The opposite of that other face that we read about in Proverbs. Okay. So, shame face is like being. I'll help you out. I'll help you out. You kind of got that face. 
you're not quick to be all up in everybody's eyes trying to seduce the brothers out here. So, like I said earlier, you're not up here trying to get in everybody's face, trying to seduce us. You chilling, you're like, all right, cool, you know. That's modest, that's, that's, that's a shame face. Bring right? it out. That's how our women should be. They should be all up in everybody's face, loud and stubborn. You understand? Having respect for the brothers. All right, you know, hey, how you doing? That's some modest behavior. You understand? Who? And sobriety, not with brooded hair. So sobriety, she's not the drunkard type of sister, always on the bottle. You understand? Right. When it says not with brooded hair, that doesn't say you can't have braids. What that means is don't let the outer appearance be the be the your pride and joy. Don't let that be the thing that defines you. That's what right. defines you is your mind. Right. You understand? Who? Or gold, or pearls, or costly array. Uh -huh. But with becoming women professing godliness with good works. So the mindset of our sisters should be godliness and good works. That's all within the mind. So in order to fix that and to start building that up, sister, you got a flyer, right? Yeah. You do? It's in the car. Card the number on the back of that flyer. We got a school down the block, not too far from here. Hang out with us. Come to learn our other sisters that's there, our wives, the children. Kind of see what the whole vibe is about. You understand? We got videos on YouTube as well. All free stuff, free classes. What's up? Nation is men leading by example.